Hey everyone, Braden here coming to you with another breaking Disney news update on this developing situation over at the Reedy Creek Improvement District, Walt Disney World's local governing body, which was recently re-engineered by the Florida legislature and is now dubbed the Central Florida Tourism Oversight District. On a day-to-day -day level, it's pretty much the same deal over at Reedy Creek, except when it comes to the governor's new hand-picked board, which immediately took a very adversary position against their district's main landowner, which of course is Disney. Well, shortly after the first meeting of that new board, the lawyers for the new board, they were getting documents together, taking a look at what the old Disney-controlled board had been up to in their final months, weeks, and days leading up to the reforming of the district. And they discovered some shocking documents, in particular, a developer's agreement that grants Disney the power to do things that were previously the authority of the local government. That of course being Reedy Creek and did it in a way where it cannot be undone by the new Reedy Creek, almost as if Disney lawyers had a year of time to plot some sort of way to subvert this new reorganization of their local government and render the new board powerless, which is exactly what they did. Now we know why Disney was so quiet for so long. It looks like they may have had an ace up their sleeve here. In the past 24 hours since this was brought to public attention by this new board, people have been pouring through the legal documents and trying to figure out exactly what happened, what this all means. And now we actually have the footage from yesterday's meeting of Reedy Creek so we can better understand what exactly happened and what exactly Disney did. To start here, I'll let the new board's special counsel tell you what they discovered in the troubling documents that they were first emailed on St. Patrick's Day. Relevant to these functions and duties of the board and to the district is something shocking that Fishback Dominic learned recently about what Disney and the district were doing in January and February of this year before the new Enabling Act became law. On Friday, March 17th, around 8.30 at night, uh, Mr. Arderman and I received an email from the district containing four agreements, one of which was a, was a development agreement that was dated February 8th, 2023. And that development agreement is between Disney and the district. Specifically, what does the development agreement contain? What does it purport to do? Well, it purports to grant Disney a vested right and ownership and control of the maximum densities and intensities of uses under the comprehensive plan for the entire district, not just for Disney's properties. It appears that the entitlements, maximum entitlements in the comprehensive plan and land development code for the entire district are the same level of maximum densities and intensities granted to Disney in the development agreement. So what is the special counsel saying here? Densities, intensities, what is all this? You may actually already have an idea of what some of this is about because one of the only newsworthy things about Reedy Creek in a normal year, uh, not this year, this year Reedy Creek's very interesting, but normally Reedy Creek, you know, it's pretty boring, uh, but something that they do uh, every 10 years is they update their comprehensive plan for the district, which gives us a look into, for example, how many more theme parks they can add, how many more water parks they can add, things of this nature. Uh, so when they release the comprehensive plan and it says, hey, we can afford to add one more major theme park, for example, uh, that's when we talk about Fifth Park and things like that, uh, which is always fun to talk about. That's just one example, but basically Reedy Creek has a comprehensive plan detailing what further development theoretically they could grant over the next 10 years. And that's not just to Disney. Disney's just the majority landowner. There are other landowners in the district and normally they have the authority over granting a maximum density for a project. Density is for residential. So let's say if Disney or anyone else inside of the district, they want to build residential. Density is how many units could go in one acre. And that is a decision that is made in conjunction with Reedy Creek. And Reedy Creek also has authority over granting maximum intent densities, uh, which designates a maximum for how much of a non-residential or mixed-use property can be allocated towards something. So for example, the square footage of land allotted for a particular project, how much of that square footage can the developer put towards something that they want to build on it, like a warehouse, or in Disney's case, a theme park or a water park, whatever it may be. And normally, this is a per-project type of thing, which makes sense, right? What the special counsel is alleging here is that on February 8th, right before the Florida legislature signed into law the new Reedy Creek, Disney's old Reedy Creek board signed a developer's agreement with Disney where the whole of Disney's property is all one big project and the maximum densities and intensities Reedy Creek 
has to a lot to all of the developers across their entire district, not just Disney. They allegedly handed all of those, the absolute maximums of development, the intensities and densities over to Disney, carte blanche, where now Disney is the local government's planning department, essentially, and can allot developer rights however they like. Apparently, they can even sell them to others, monetize what is conventionally a local government authority, an authority that local governments have across the country, across the world. All this being something that is said to provide certainty to both RCID and Disney over the next 30 years per the meeting minutes of the February 8th meeting. Some pretty insane stuff. What this DA does, it takes and it assigns to Disney the maximum intensities and densities allowed district-wide to just Disney. And it lets Disney control where those densities and intensities can be allocated district-wide, including on Disney's property. So Disney essentially becomes the planning department for the district. That's a fair way of saying it. So we give governmental power to Disney. That's what it appears, mm -hmm. yes. So the board, they got those documents emailed to them a couple of weeks ago, and now they've called this special meeting because they're finding that they are powerless. It seems authority Reedy Creek is supposed to hold has been transferred to their district's largest landowner who can continue doing as they please, making Reedy Creek, in some respects, a pass-through entity. And it mandates this district to sign off on any permit application submitted to any state agency or federal government so apparently we're just supposed to sign permit applications because we're asked to. Further, the DA prohibits the district from regulating the heights of any structure that Disney builds in the entire district. It appears to me that the DA is fill, filled with unlawful delegation of legislative authority to a private party. Now, getting away from a lot of this nerdy land development sort of stuff and onto more of the fun stuff, you guys are not gonna believe this. So I'm not a lawyer, but I have looked into this situation quite a bit uh, over the last 24 hours. So Disney wants to ensure their rights and power over anything DeSantis's people want to do in perpetuity, right? They want these crazy agreements, the restrictive covenants. They wanna make the new board powerless in perpetuity. You know, Disney shoved that through last minute and Disney never wants that to go away, but you can't actually put that in writing in many cases because of something called the rule against perpetuities, where you can't write a legal document exerting control over private property well beyond the lives of anyone around today. So instead, something you can use in theory, usually this is just a bar exam type of question, but Disney's legal team actually used this thing. It's called the Royal Clause. You can find it in the terms of the agreements signed at that February 8th meeting of Disney's old Reedy Creek board. And I'll let a member of the new board take it away on this, on this unbelievable clause. This is crazy stuff. And I want to read the term of this agreement. Usually when I do a restrictive covenant, for, for example, for a golf course, we want to redevelop a portion of the golf course. They're going to restrict it so the rest of the golf course has to stay and there's certain setbacks and those things. You do like a 99 year term. I'm going to read to you the term of this restrictive covenant. This dec declaration shall continue in effect until 21 years after the death of the last survivor of the descendants of King Charles III, King of England, living as of the date of this declaration. <laughs> So, I mean, I don't know what else to say. I think these documents are void ab initio. I think they were an extremely aggressive overreach, and I'm very disappointed that uh, that they're here. So, as that board member was starting to segue to about the legality of these documents, Disney got through, you know, they're binding the board's hands. Are these documents legitimate? Can they be thrown out? This board is looking to take Disney to court. They are putting together law firms as we speak. And if you were them, you know, what else is there to do, right? No matter your politics, this is the local government. Forget the politics around this. This is the local governing body um, that has control over Walt Disney World. Well, if you give that control to the private entity and now the private entity is the local government, that's not something that can stand. That is something that is going to end up in court. And Disney likely knows that. This is likely a delay tactic where it'll take the board years and years to bring it before the Supreme Court or whoever has the ability to unwind these agreements that the board can't unwind that are set in stone here uh, that the lawyer Lawyers, Disney's lawyers did a very good job of making sure it cannot be undone. It may very well be a long drawn out process. And to this end, the board is quite disappointed. 
I do strongly encourage that we follow up with investigation and what follow-up action can be taken. It looks like they were trying to uh, preempt the powers of this board for 30 years on the eve of legislation getting enacted. It looks like they were essentially trying to nullify the act of the Florida legislature, who's there for the people, and the governor. I cannot tell you the level of my disappointment in Disney. I thought so much better of them. This essentially makes Disney the government. This board loses, for practical purposes, the majority of its ability to do anything beyond maintain the roads and maintain basic infrastructure. I will say on that previous clip, the primary role of Reedy Creek is to maintain the infrastructure and the roads. That is a big part of what they do. It really seems like some of the members on this new board thought that they would be Imagineers, like they'd be in charge of the creative on rides or have some sort of say in it or something like that, when that is not at all what Reedy Creek is. They are not Imagineers. It's just an absolutely wild situation here. No matter your politics, I think you could say this is a masterful chess move on Disney's part. We'll see how this goes, because if these documents are as crazy as the new board's special counsel is making them out to be, the court may see it the same way and have them unwound and return the power to the Reedy Creek board. But in the meantime, this board, the governor, they have egg on their faces for allowing all this to happen. Think about it, much of this happened. That February 8th meeting, that was before the House Bill 9B uh, that reformed Reedy Creek, that's before that went through. That was before that was signed into law. So the fact that they didn't have much visibility into this, they didn't know about this, uh, to be fair, I didn't know about this either. I don't think many people did, uh, but these are public meetings that were going on. And the lawyers even admit they haven't even looked through all the documents that Disney shoved through yet. Um, so this is kind of an embarrassing situation uh, for the state um, that Disney was able to get all this through. And they haven't even gone through all the documents yet. Nobody has. So there's likely more shoes to drop here, more things that we're going to discover. There are thousands of pages of documents that went through last minute, they say. Listen to this. I think we've laid that out. We, we've not seen all the documents. Uh, uh, the district staff has been uh, sending. Uh, there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of documents. Uh, these uh, were the most egregious. Uh, we've not really vetted the rest of them, but clearly this came. I mean, I mean there's thousands of documents, but these came to us, we looked at them, and uh, that's why one of the reasons we, uh, we're here. So on your agenda, uh, our um, special, additional special counsel with respect to um, um, adding um, more counsel uh, that could meet Disney, as legal team on, on equal footing. So they are going to war, man. This is going to be a war. Uh, it's gonna be one that will be fought out in the courts. We'll see how long it takes. My question is, if this is a years long legal pursuit to try to get the board's power back, and in the interim, the governor and the legislature, they look like schmucks for having let Disney do all this. While there's some sort of legal battle going on, do they have other sticks to use against Disney for political gain. Perhaps an audit of Bay Lake or Lake Buena Vista, as WDW Pro uh, was suggesting. I was asking people on Twitter what they thought of this, what else they might do, what else the state might do, uh, because this is a little bit of a humiliating situation for them. Uh, so I think we could see some sort of retaliatory, you know, some other moves, some other thing that they could do uh, besides messing with Reedy Creek. Uh, while that whole situation, they try to work out what exactly is going on there and then what steps to take. So we'll see what happens there, but we are certainly still in the very early stages of all of this and I will keep you apprised of all the latest so make sure you're subscribed with those notifications on one more thing I found when I was looking through the developer agreement and that February 8th meeting and everything that they signed in there's one page where Disney restricts the government that oversees them Reedy Creek from altering any portion of of their own government buildings, changing the aesthetics in any way before getting prior review and comment approval from Disney, which is just hilarious. Imagine if you said, you know, the US Capitol building, that cannot be changed without the express written consent of some local major business or something, you know, Home Depot or whoever. Pretty crazy stuff to think about. You gotta admit, this whole thing is pretty hilarious. It is quite a troll on Disney's part. It is unbelievable stuff, um, but it's also quite serious stuff. This is the local governing body 
that, that looks over Walt Disney World. Uh, so the fact that Disney's taking away a lot of their planning abilities and things like that, uh, that power I do think does need to be returned. Uh, on what time frame will that be returned? We'll just have to see. Uh, but Disney's lawyers, they do seem to be quite smart there. So thank you guys so much for watching. From the Mickey Views Magic Studio, this is Brayden. Have a magical day.